Hi there, I'm John Lebensold, and this is the eighth video in a series to set up a very simple PayPal shopping cart. So far, we've got the beginnings of a shopping cart object. It can add an item, we can get items from it, we can get item quantity from it, we can empty our cart, and we've also created a couple of interesting little templates. And we've got two pages for our shopping cart. We've got an index page and we've got an add to cart page. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to create the amount in our order form. We're also going to put in the unit cost and we're going to flush out the rest of that shopping cart class. So let's get started. So just like we have a quantity here, I also want to get the, I the item amount. It's going to do something like for each get XML catalog as product. And if product ID is equal to product ID, and this is from the, the node in the XML collection, then we want to basically have the amount equal the product price, right? And that's the cost of the item. Now I'm going to wrap this up into a function. We're going to call this get item cost. And I'm going to take this, I'm just going to paste that in there. Now you're noticing that there's a function inside of a function, but don't worry, we'll pull that out. And we'll just put that here. Whoops. And what we'll do is we'll actually return the product price and if we don't we're gonna do something we're gonna throw an exception and an exception is basically a way of saying hey something went wrong with the program uh, we couldn't find something or the item wasn't found or there was an issue so I'm just gonna say throw new exception so an exception object is an object that comes you know this is just like new shopping cart but new exception but ex exception is part of the PHP 5.2 language. So it's an object that has been written into the PHP language. And I'm just going to say item not found and I'm going to put in the product ID. So, oh, and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to ask for the product ID here. Now, oh, we need a semicolon. So either what's going to happen is we're going to find this product and then we're going to return the price. And if we don't find the product, then we're just going to throw an exception. And that way we're going to know something bad happened. Now I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to stick it in my functions file. So we're starting to get these neat little functions that really describe what we're doing. We have get XML catalog, get shopping cart, set shopping cart, product exists, which returns true or false, get item cost, and we've got this shopping cart object which has its own set of functions that are specific to the shopping cart. So add item, get items, get item quantity, and empty cart. Now that we have that, we can go back to our add to cart page, and we can say that the amount is equal to get item cost product ID. Now, I'm just going to add a dollar sign here. And if I refresh that, you're going to see that the amount is $1.33. Now, that doesn't quite look right, if you ask me, because we should be counting how many times you've gotten tomato soup, right? So this is why maybe it does make sense for us to, rather than just get the item cost, we also want to, maybe we, let's call this the unit cost instead. And what we'll do is we'll get the amount from the shopping cart. And because the shopping cart knows how many items we've got of, or the quantity of each item, it will be in a better position to tell us how much this actually costs. So I'm going to say get item cost, and I'm going to pass in the same product ID. So this is a little confusing, but basically we've got the unit cost, which is for one item, and we're going to need that for our PayPal shopping cart, because PayPal wants to know how much each individual item costs, and it'll do its own math. 
and then we have the amount that we want to show to our actual users. So let's create a function here called get item cost. Pass in the product ID again. That product ID is really important, as you can see, because it basically ties everything together. It's a unique identifier. And so this is going to look a little strange, but we're basically going to take the cost as a string, and we're going to do get item cost, and we're going to pass in the product ID. Then we have to convert it into a float. Now, a float is basically a decimal point number that we can do math with. And I'm going to say cost float equals, and this is going to look a little funny, but basically we take the cost as a string, uh, as a string variable, and then we add nothing to it. So now PHP knows that this is a number that we can do math with as opposed to just a string. And then we're going to return cost float times, we're going to do int val, and now what int val does is it basically takes whatever we've got, whatever number or anything, and makes sure that it's an integer. Because we don't want to have it multiplying a float with something that isn't even an integer, you know, and then we'd get some funny math there. And so we'll say this, items, and then we'll pass in the product ID. And in fact, looking at this, we can, we can do a little better. So I'm going to say this, get item quantity product ID. So what's going on here is actually we can do a little better than that. We can just say cost float times get item quantity. And over here, I'm going to put in the int val. So Whenever I call get item quantity, it's going to return as an integer. And over here, I'm basically saying cost float times get item quantity, and that's the item cost. So if I refresh that, now this is starting to look a little more logical. We've got tomato soup, we've got the quantity, and we have got the total amount.